we are at Soundcheck. Um, you get to hear all the glamorous uh, backside of the uh, music business when you hang out with us very long. It's, it's not as glamorous as people probably think it is, but it's, uh, it's what I've wanted all my life. So it's, uh, it's all the sounds and sights that I always wanted in front of me. This guitar was, uh, is a triple O 18, 1957, 56, 57, and just kind of crest. And um, was given to me when I was a kid, uh, given to my dad to be more specific. Uh, a friend of my dad had, uh, was in bad health, had no heirs, and there was four kids in our family. He said, surely one of them will play. So gave us the guitar, sat in my closet till I was 16. And I tried to sell it because I wanted an Ibanez, you know, so I could shred. Even though I didn't know how to play guitar at all, I just, I knew what, I, what look I wanted. And luckily the guy that owned the shop uh, was a friend. And he said, you don't even know what that is, do you? I said, I know I can't do two hand tapping on it. So he said, well, hang on, let me date it, let me see. And then, you know, convinced me to hang on to it. And so it's the only guitar I've ever uh, held on to all my life and I've written Virtually every song I've ever written has been on this guitar. It's, um, it, I, would, I would venture to say it shapes what I write and vice versa. I think because certain things sound good when played on this guitar, I tend to lean toward them. And my guitar playing, you know, is probably shaped by this guitar too because, you know, certain things intrigue me when they come out of this sound hole. So I tend to go back to them. Um, and you know every guitar has got songs in it, and you know some more than others. And but this one, for whatever reason, always inspires me when I pick it up. So yeah, I think it'll always be my my go-to. I've got a uh, I've got an old Gibson 1932 L00. Just got it up in Chicago at the Music Exchange, and haven't had a chance to write with it yet. Just had it about a week, and I couldn't love this guitar more. Totally different thing than this. I wanted a small body guitar like this to complement and also as a backup on stage. Um, but um, so it's just came into the arsenal. Um, a 1953 L4 Gibson, which typically is an acoustic, you know, arch top F hole kind of thing. But somebody back in the day put a D. Arman pickup in it really well and super simple but does exactly what I want to. I can crank it up. It, it's, uh, it's got that classic Gibson neck and uh, uh, got it at Gruen's in Nashville. And then also a Gibson uh, 125T, the thin line. You know, another guitar that does this thing that I need, you know, not, not incredibly versatile, you know, as far as guitars go, but it's just got that special thing that, that uh, fits really well into what the Civil Wars do. Princeton, 1965, yeah, and I looked a long time for that. I'd never owned an amp before. It's the first amp I ever owned, and I'd drooled all over everyone's and, and talked to some guitar players that knew what we do and knew that I was a beginning electric player. I'd always played acoustic all my life and uh, narrowed it down to that guy. And, and I figure if they're reissuing that year, there must be something, must be something to it. So uh, it, it's, a, it, it's a little bittersweet playing it right now because I play it loud, so it'll you know, do its thing, but I end up with too much stage volume you know, for joy, so I'm turning it around and then mocking it. And, so it sounds the way it should, but no one sees it. <laughs> They've got like a drink table in front of it because the back of the amp is kind of lame. So yeah, I'm really proud of it, but no one knows I'm playing it. I need a mirror back there or something so everybody knows what's going on. I think with every guitar you pick up, and that definitely goes for this one and it goes for the ones I have on stage, certain things leap out. Certain chords are like, oh, that, that works. So I'm going to stay in that area for a little while and like, 
uh, certain progressions just leap out and certain you, for whatever reason, when you're noodling around, you go to a certain place, just a sweet spot and you stay there and, and it'll call to mind certain lyrical things or like feelings you had as a, as a kid or, or a story you've heard from someone else. And, um, it's not incredibly scientific, but like the little Gibson L double O, I mean, you know, it's basically an old Robert Johnson guitar. It's pretty much the blues king thing. And, and so as soon as you play a chord, you want to do, you know, a 12 bar blues or something like that. And you have to fight not doing it. And when you get out of that and do things that might not have been meant, on, meant to be played on a guitar, sometimes there's, you know, brilliance there, but sometimes you're just, you know, trying to put a square peg in a round hole. And, uh, the thing about this guitar is that it's got just enough low end, it's got just enough top end, it's just smooth enough, it's just easy enough to play, but it, the action's a little high, so it takes a little effort. You know, you gotta really wanna play that chord. You know, it's gotta be something that's in your wheelhouse. Um, and for whatever reason, it definitely shapes, shapes what I do. I don't typically play solos, I'm a, just a rhythm. Uh, I make up what I'm playing most of the time. It's not like I'm inventing anything, but I don't know what I'm playing half the time. It's just, I'll either hear it in my head and figure it out, or I'll just be goofing off and something will intrigue me and I'll stick with it. And somebody will ask me what I'm playing and I've got no idea. I have no idea. Uh, well, um, my love affair with Elixir Strings started as long as I can remember because um, I have highly acidic hands. I can touch strings and kill them, just like that. And always did. My friends wouldn't let me play their guitars for that very reason. Um, and I just started learning how to play rusty strings back home because I couldn't afford buying more strings. Or I'd play a four string guitar because I'd break them or whatever because they'd been so rusty for so long. And I got turned on to elixirs and the coated strings. And so when I first started playing them, it was totally for function's sake, you know, because they would last. And that was what turned me on the first time. And then um, I wasn't really a guitar player yet, so I didn't really have the ears for, you know, the good and bad of the string. But I started noticing from playing my guitar to playing other people's guitars, the l lack of string noise, which I may think some people may lock that. And I like the absence of it. When I go back to a normal uncoated string, it, it just distracts the hell out of me. Um, then started noticing little by little um, how much um, longer they'd last, which was a huge deal, you know, to a kid that had a limited amount of money and, and was playing all the time and uh, was killing strings. And so, it, and, but, and the other thing was also uh, tuning the guitar. When I'd put new strings on, and it's still to this day, Put the strings on, stretch them one time, done. No more wobbling, no more having to, you know, I'll change all my strings for the show tonight and I won't be nervous about it in the least. Because, you know, and I never was that way with, with other strings. I'd have to, I'd time it two days ahead of a show so that they would fully be ready to play. I'll, I'll change strings and walk out on stage now. I don't have any qualms about it at all. Um, but by and large, I started noticing that um, I just liked the sound of the strings better than any other string. And I used to always think that the reason that I was playing them is because of all those things I just said, all the practical things about it. But I started realizing that what it really was about was the sound of, you know, it wasn't that, that harsh, thin, bright sound of unwound strings that, that that now, I don't know if I've just, you know, become accustomed to the sound of the electric strings or vice versa, but I don't want anything else on any, one, any of my guitars. So when I started having conversations with the folks at Elixir, I, I, I hope it wasn't obvious that I was kind of hopping around the room because um, if there's any product that I'm gonna stand behind, it'd be those strings because I, and, that's all I've ever played, and so it was pretty easy to tell them, yeah, we can, we can do something. And pretend like I was being cool when I was just like, I've been praying for that for a long time, so. Yeah, 
It's, uh, it's the easiest endorsement I ever made.